Can you first introduce yourself and the organization you work for? My name is Myrtle Clark and I'm Managing Director of Fields of Green for All, cannabis legalization non-profit company. Can you explain us uh, what uh, are the, the laws uh, in, uh, in regard to cannabis in, in, in your country and how the legislation has been changing recently? So in September 2018, one of our court cases, civil society court cases, had a victory in our constitutional court where we got the right to use, possess and cultivate cannabis within private spaces. Uh, no trade is allowed yet. And uh, at that time, the court gave the government two years to amend the offending parts of the legislation and that two years will now expire in uh, September 2020. So we're in a bit of a rush to get the government to um, adopt fair regulations that are evidence-based and that also pass our constitution because South Africa has one of the most advanced and human rights-based constitutions in the world. Um, so we've only just, because we've been fighting our government in court, We've only just started to engage uh, government, so it's starting to get busier and busier. What do you think how the new law should look like? How, how should it regulate the market? Well, that is one of our challenges as the only cannabis legalization NGO in South Africa. So what we've done is we've actually drawn up a manifesto for policy reform. We've written a whole book for the government. Um, our final draft is out and we're busy with the final edition, which hopefully will be out in May or, May or June this year. And what we want is um, a regulation system that is based on the existing cannabis market because as you know uh, we've been using cultivating and trading in cannabis in southern Africa for over 500 years so um, to support this we are also going to conduct a large nationwide cannabis survey with a very reputable survey company and we want to take that together with our public petition and propose that we have a type of a cooperative model uh, we call it the hub system uh, that is for the commercial market. Obviously, the pharmaceutical market will be uh, controlled by our health practitioners regulatory authority. But then we're also proposing what we call the Dacha private clubs, which is the, the cannabis social club model. So it would have three tiers um, for the different uses. Because what we're seeing now, and our president announced this two weeks ago in his State of the Nation address, is the government willingness to regulate medical and industrial cannabis. But they have forgot, forgotten out two very, very important parts, which is adult use and traditional cultural and religious use. Um, so that is why we want the, the Dacha private clubs, so that can cover what the government are not aware of at all and are leaving out in their discussions. Is there any opposition to the reform in your country? Yes. Yes, there is. Uh, you know, South Africa is essentially a very conservative place. It's also very religious. So uh, the main opposition obviously comes from uh, conservative church groups. And it is mainly the Christian religion. We don't seem to get very much opposition from the, from the other religions. Um, and then there's also from the uh, rehab fraternity. Um, we find that there's very well-funded, often religious rehabilitation organizations that are often funded with American money, uh, and they opposed us in court back in 2017, and um, they're still around in the background. Um, but this is, I think, can be overcome, can be overcome with sensible regulations. How do you address the concerns of people, like not these religious groups, but the everyday people, when they are asking you, like, so, okay, so uh, how, how can you ensure that young people will be kept safe and uh, uh, the, the, the market will not be too much commercial, there won't be so many, much, you know, advertisements everywhere? We always assure them that right now in the unregulated market, children are at far more danger. And particularly when it comes to drug education in, in institutions like schools and training colleges and universities, 
The drug education is obviously a lot of misinformation and scaremongering tactics. It's all fear-based. So we are assuring people with those concerns that uh, we need evidence-based drug e education. For, for our younger people in our society because young people are not stupid and they're really good with the internet and information gathering and so when um, their elders or those people in positions of authority are giving them misinformation they're likely to know so we owe it to our young people to actually tell the truth uh, this is this is really important and I think also with the over commercialization we're seeing it already you know we have large Canadian American companies companies coming to South Africa, they're there already. And we would that is why we are pushing the private club model so hard. Because that is for to preserve cannabis culture first of all and our traditions uh, and also to allow for no, a non profit sector. Um, because we're we're very concerned about licensing and how it'll work because we have possibly one of the most corrupt countries in the whole world. You know, for a whole day before we left we didn't have any electricity at home because we have rolling back up blackouts because the government stole all the money. So it's a very, very big concern, this over-commercialization and corruption, but we're watching. And I've already written very strongly worded letters to companies, like particularly the big Canadian companies, and I've said to them that we will fight them in court to preserve our South African right to our people's plants.